Soon there will be a new sheriff in town, according to brand new information from Google DeepMind CEO. In 2016, an artificial intelligence program by the name of AlphaGo from Google DeepMind's lab did the impossible by winning against a champion player at the board game Go. Ooh. That's a very that's Ooh. a very surprising move. I thought I thought it was I thought it was a mistake. Now Demis Hassabis, DeepMind co-founder and CEO, is saying that his engineers are using techniques from AlphaGo to make an AI known as Gemini that will rise from the ashes to absolutely conquer ChatGPT. On this episode of AI Focus, first we get into what Gemini is and then we'll get into how the integration of AlphaGo's technology could make it the head honcho of large language models. DeepMind's Gemini was announced this year at Google's developer conference. This includes our next generation foundation model, Gemini, which is still in training. It's still in development and it's a large language model that has been anticipated to be the competition of GPT-4, OpenAI's latest large language model. It will have a focus on tool and API integrations, allowing for wider collaboration and will have improved memory and planning. Gemini will replace Google's current language model, Palm 2, which already powers their Bard chatbot and the Duet AI workspace. But Gemini isn't your average AI model. It will be multimodal and capable of processing images, text, and other kinds of data like graphs and maps, meaning these capabilities will transfer to every service already powered by Palm 2. Your data in Google Docs and Sheets would ideally be more well-rounded and have more depth with the addition of Gemini. Look at this example of a multimodal model from the Google Research blog. It shows how a model can pull features from a video to create a summary and also answer follow-up text questions. These capabilities would allow Gemini to not only write a story for you, but it could generate the pictures for it too in the exact style that you want. Think mid-journey combined with GPT-4. Even more interesting is that Gemini will come in four different sizes. It wasn't specified what these sizes would be, but Google's CEO did say that the sizes would be just like Palm 2. And Palm 2 comes in four sizes, Gecko, Otter, Bison, and Unicorn, Gecko being lightweight enough to fit on a phone. But Gemini's secret weapon is the pairing of generative AI with AlphaGo's sophisticated techniques that aim to allow Gemini to plan and solve problems. Before we get into that, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. The DeepMind CEO was quoted saying, at a high level, you can think of Gemini as combining some of the strengths of AlphaGo type systems with the amazing language capabilities of the large models. We also have some new innovations that are going to be pretty interesting. AlphaGo was based on a technique DeepMind created called reinforcement learning. This is where software tackles with choosing solutions for tough problems by making repeated attempts and reviewing feedback for its performance. It's kind of like training a dog. You give the dog a treat for good actions and chastise it for taking the wrong action. It also uses a method called tree search to remember and explore moves on the board. This might be the next big tool for large language models. Hasaba says that we're only months away from Gemini's completed training that may cost hundreds of millions of dollars. You may know that a lot of the brightest minds in AI came from Google before branching out to other directions, including those who left for the rival OpenAI. The company joined forces with the AI powerhouse DeepMind recently in order to challenge OpenAI's dominance in the field. If Google is known as the starting point for the brightest AI minds in the world, then DeepMind is known for their powerful algorithms that create some of the most sophisticated AI around. In 2014, DeepMind was acquired by Google after they created software that used reinforcement learning to master video games. As the years passed, DeepMind applied this technique to progressively more human-like skills, the peak of which being when they developed AlphaGo. This was a machine that beat a human at a game of Go and he was the best in the world at it. People tend to assume that machine learning is all about big data and massive amounts of computation. But actually what we saw in AlphaGo Zero is that algorithms matter much more than either compute or uh, data availability. In fact, in AlphaGo Zero, we use more than an order of magnitude less computation than we used in previous versions of AlphaGo. And yet it was able to perform at a much higher level due to using much more principled algorithms than we had before.
Go is like geopolitics, like something small that happens here can have a ripple effect, you know, hours down, down the road in a different part of the board. The game kind of turned on its axis at that moment. This move is very special because with this move, all the storm play before is work together, it's connect. It looks like a network linked everywhere. It's very special. I think we've seen an original move here. That's the kind of move uh, that, you, that you play go for. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I don't really know if it's a good or bad move at this point. The professional commentators almost unanimously said that not a single human player would have chosen move 37. So I actually had a poke around in AlphaGo to see what AlphaGo thought. And AlphaGo actually agreed with that assessment. AlphaGo said there was a 1 in 10,000 probability that move 37 would have been played by a human player. So it knew that this was an extremely unlikely move. It went beyond its human guide and it came up with something new and, and creative and different. People thought it would be decades before a machine could master a game of this complexity. On the subject of Google DeepMind, Hasabis says, if you look at where we are in AI, I would argue that 80 or 90% of the innovations come from one or the other. There are brilliant things that have been done by both organizations over the last decade. How would the AlphaGo algorithm change the large language model and eclipse ChatGPT in the process? Well, training a large language model traditionally means feeding books, web pages, and other sources of text into a machine learning system called a transformer. It uses the patterns in this data to become good at predicting the letters and words that should follow a piece of text. It's great for answering questions or generating code, as we've all seen. Adding AlphaGo's technique to the language model would really be adding the capability of reinforcement learning. The AI would learn through a process of human feedback on its decisions. So the addition of this new technique based on human feedback on AI answers could further improve its performance, giving Gemini the leg up on the competition. And this isn't just any reinforcement learning algorithm, it's the algorithm that comes from the pioneers themselves. I just did a video on DeepMind's new project RoboCat that uses this very algorithm to have an AI learn from real world practice and it can teach itself. This addresses the limitation generative AI has, it can only learn from text. Google DeepMind is currently training Gemini and after that it'll move to the fine tuning and safety phase. I'm not sure when it's coming out but it should be soon seeing as though the competition never sleeps. What do you think about Google's Gemini? Will it change the world as we know it? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.